Hi everyone, my name is Kiara Lavinia and I would like to welcome you guys to my channel where I'll be giving you insight on my new business, lifestyle, and fashion. For starters, my full name is Kiara Davis, but my YouTube name is Kiara Lavinia, which is my middle name, Lavinia. So if you see Lavinia, Lavinia, that's my middle name, no worries. Um, my last name is Davis. Now, um, I'm 24 years old and a new business owner of Shoe Maniac LLC. Now, um, currently, I do work full-time as a staffing specialist Monday through Friday. If I'm not working, I'm usually working on my businesses, promoting, doing all types of stuff. But when I'm on my free time, I do spend most of my time with my boyfriend, 9 out of 10, you know, with my boyfriend or my friends. And yeah, so me and my boyfriend Joshua have been together two years, going on three in July. On our free time when we're not busy, mainly we just be traveling or we have small get together with friends. We like to go eat. And we also have another channel, The JK Way. So you guys can go watch and subscribe, like, and rate our channel over there, The JK Way. I'll go ahead and put it down in the description. The first thing I did want to get into was how I started my business and what motivated me to start my small business during the pandemic. So um, my brand specializes in selling exclusive women footwear sizes 5.5 to 10 and sometimes to 11 depend on the shoe or the brand. Um, and in this video, I'll be sharing the basics of how I came up my brand and the steps of how I did to get to my brand. Now there are 13 steps that I'm going to share with you guys. So grab a pencil, notebook, write it down. You know, you got to pause this video, save it, subscribe, like to it so you can bring it back up. And get your business started or help someone out or just just want to know information about it step by step now i do want to let you guys know you do not have to follow my steps this is what i did is some of these steps are not mandatory but i i'm not telling this stuff just to string it along just because i did it i think that it's very important you don't skip these steps where they're not mandatory so um first thing first how I came up with my idea was it started back in March when the pandemic first started. I was working full time at another job and like it was so slow during the days or the week sometimes. So I would sit at my desk and I was like, I want to do something else. My life is getting boring. Work, back home. What is life? So yeah, I was like, I need something to do. So I was talking with a friend at a time and my boyfriend and eventually I came up I want a, a side hustle something that I'm excited about that gets me up in the morning because I hated my job with a passion I hated my job so I was like I need something to get me up every day that I love doing and I'll be a hundred percent towards whatever I put my name on because whatever I put my name on it's gonna be a hundred percent with that job I don't care whatever got me from 6 30 to 5 o'clock in and out and come home and do it the next day so yeah that was my motivation to start up something of my own because i hate working for someone that isn't like me who don't value their employees like i hate a toxic work environment like that yeah i was miserable there basically while i was at work i would write down things i love and i, I was stuck i was stuck for a moment and then eventually i was like i love to do i can't do hair can't do nails i was like well dang what am i good at so eventually i just should focus on writing things down that i love i love shoes i love food i love drinking i love having fun so um i narrowed down to shoes and food and i was like well i don't know too much about food i just like to eat i can barely cook but i, I do a little something so yeah, I narrowed it down to shoes. I love shoes, y'all. Like slides, sandals, heels, boots, booties, any type of shoes I love. So yeah, um, as I got down to shoes, I was like, well, I know about women's shoes, but I don't know too much of men's shoes. So I then narrowed it down to just women's shoes. I was like, well, I can sell them. So I did my research a little bit and I, I literally I researched this for like the rest of the week, every day at work, every free chance I got. So I researched shoes and I came up with two options. One option was I can become my own business and sell shoes or two, I can become a wholesaler. Now a wholesaler is someone who doesn't run the business, they're behind doors. So like a vendor, I could become a vendor that sell wholesale shoes. So that's what it is. So I researched them more and I made a list, vendor, um, business, starting my own business. 
So I wrote a list and the most things that I came up with each list is whatever I went with. So eventually I didn't have too much about a whole a vendor. A vendor, I, I was stuck, it was at a brick wall. But as I went to researching and starting my own business, it was a whole list and I was very interested in it. So I was like, yeah, I can do that. Like I can see myself doing this. So that's how it started for me and what gave me the motivation of starting my own business. Now there's 13 steps that I did take from April to October. That's from the start to the getting everything together to launching my business. That's how long it took me. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into the first step. First step I took of launching my business, I would say with research and finding my purpose and figure out what I love. So as I mentioned earlier of my motivation, that is a part of my step one, finding what I was good at, finding what I can do every day and be excited about like have the same attitude every day instead of just doing it just to do it like a regular nine to five i'm doing it to get paid i'm just doing it to have a job so i want to be some do something that i was excited about that i can actually start up myself and work for myself so that was my motivation and that was my purpose so step one again would be finding your purpose and figuring out what you love step two Step two would be to come up with a name of whatever I decided to do. So as I said earlier on my motivation of step one, I decided I wanted to sell shoes. So I also decided I wanted to become a businesswoman. I wanted to do this on my own. I didn't want to be a vendor. I just didn't want to collect shoes. So as I found my purpose, step two was finding a name. So whatever you do, you have to have a name on it. You can't just sell shoes and not have a name on your brand so i was like no i want a name i want something that was short simple and straight to the point i didn't want no long name but i also wanted a name that from from reading it you can tell what i'll be doing so again i'm at work again and i wrote down a long list of names i try everything i'm googling everything i don't want to have anyone else name i want this name to be unique short and simple so I was like, shoes. I thought about, for some reason, how everybody be going crazy, standing up for the new Jordans, the new releases that come out, how they have the long not line. So I went on Google and I looked up crazy, every word that synonym of crazy. And I came up with maniac. So I was like, shoe maniac, shoe maniac. So that's how I came up with my name. So yeah, I, I had like three different names and I narrowed it down to two shoe maniac and i can't remember the second one something shooty and i was like nah shooty is too common i don't want to be coming so i did decide to go with shoe maniac and yeah so i got i sent it to my boyfriend my family my sisters my mom and a couple of friends they were the only one who knew about it and everyone was excited i was like yeah that's a great name so i was like okay cool shoe maniac it is number three Number three would after you get your, your your purpose and you find a name for your business would be to legalize your name. So what I mean by that is name reservation. I'm in the state of Georgia, so for my state, I did have to go on the, the Georgia Secretary State of Office website and reserve my name. So what I mean by that is you can go on the website and you can reserve your name to see if it is taken already so i did mine on may 2nd um i had to go to the website again and i put in my information it took all the five minutes they gave me three options um i didn't want to do three options because i was like what well, is my name taken i don't even want to use shoe maniac or whatever they give me so i just did shoe maniac i, I winked it i didn't want to do three options because i was determined my name wasn't taken so I put in Shoe Mania, I put in my information, and then at the end, I had to pay a fee of $25. So I paid my fee, and this was on May 2nd. I paid my fee, and after that, I got an email, a confirmation, a receipt of my $25 I paid from the state. And that was it. That's how I reserved my name. So it was simple. It only took $25. So again name reservation step three and this step is not mandatory you don't have to do it but i wouldn't advise you to skip this step because this is a very important step if you don't do nothing else this step is very important so yeah um may 8th like a couple of days later a week later i got another email from georgia state and they were saying 
oh, the name is not taken. This name is reserved for you for 30 days. So 30 days, that name was mine. So I was like, what does that mean? Keep repaying another $25 to reserve it for me every month? I was confused. So I went to YouTube and this brings me to step four. After I figured out the name was mine for my business, um, I filed for an LLC. Now you don't have to get an LLC. This is not mandatory. Do your research. You can become anything, but I felt like LLC was perfect for me and my business at the time. So I did file for my LLC on May 17th. May 17th, I had my aunt got me through the steps. I didn't know what I was doing. She got me through the steps and I filed for it and I had to pay a hundred dollars. That fee was a hundred dollars. So I paid my hundred dollars. I completed the thing, got another confirmation email stating that I had successfully filed my LLC and a receipt of the $100 fee I did have to pay. Now, it took from May 17th to May 22nd, I believe. So yeah, May 22nd, I got another email confirming that my LLC was successfully filed, y'all. They gave me a letter of my LLC, I printed it out and I put it on my wall. I saved it in my email and this was May 22nd, y'all. I had told nobody what I was doing. I didn't make a post yet. I was just doing it to get myself ahead, you know? So when it's time to lunch, I can, you know, post all this stuff later. Now, this step is not mandatory. You do not have to get an LLC. I will do recommend doing your research, 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 because you don't have to get an LLC to make your business legit. LLCs are not for everybody. But this brings me back to step four, um, name reservation. Name reservation and the LLC, if you do decide to get an LLC, are kind of like hand in hand. That's why I say name reservation is important because if you skip name reservation, let's say you wanted to do Burger King. Burger King is already taken, but they don't have LLC on there. So when you're filing yours and they see that Burger King is an establishment already and it's it's already legal they can deny it after you paid your hundred dollars after you filed your LLC so then you have to go back and you have to file again you have to pay another hundred dollars and you have to file again and change the name so that's why I say do the name reservation first to make sure your name isn't taken and if you don't want to do the name reservation I do recommend googling your name to see if it pops up anywhere Facebook it Twitter it anywhere you can to see if that name pops up if you don't want to pay the $25 to do the name reservation. But another good reason to do the name reservation is, is because, like I said, Burger King, they have their name on everything. So you decide to do Burger King and you put your Burger King on all of your products on everything. And then you finally you finally get the, the um, notification that you can't use that name. So now you got to not only pay another $100, you have to pay for new labeling for all your products. And it's just a hassle in the long run. So step number five is registering for EIN number. So after I got my LLC back, I was like, what to do next? My auntie got me through the steps and I didn't want to thank her because I was so confused. My auntie and my mom, they helped me a lot. So yeah, I um, register for an EIN number and you're probably wondering, what is an EIN number? EIN number is an employee identification number. It would identify you, your business, and your taxes. So if you have to file any type of taxes, you would need your e uh, EIN number to file taxes. You can't do anything without an EIN number and that number is free. You do not have to pay for that number. In the state of Georgia, you do not have to pay for it. I didn't pay for it, it was free. So yeah, that is step number five. I do recommend you getting that. That step is mandatory. It's not just a, you should get it. If you just want to sell things on Facebook or something, you don't need it. But if you want to be legit, um, have your own website, file taxes, and have an actual business, the EIN number is mandatory. You can't do anything without an EIN number. So step number six. Step number six would be to write up a business plan. Once you got all your... Um, certifications for your business, your EIN number, your LLC, your name reservation, and it's yours, go ahead and write up your business plan. Your business plan will conclude everything as in financing, what are you gonna, your goals for your business, um, everything. Like, there's something you need to write down. Like, for my business plan, I wrote down my goals, 
how much inventory, how much money I'll be spending, when I'm going to launch my business, everything. So step number six, you don't have to do, but it's something I recommend doing. I do not recommend skipping this step. So if you decide to open up a loan or a business account, they will need to see like something like your actual business. So that goes back to step five. When you're opening your business account, you need an EIN number. You can't open the business account without one. So to open your business account for your brand, don't skip number five. So back to number six. When for your business plan, if you choose to open a business bank account, you don't need one. But if you want a loan of any kind, a business plan will be the best way to go. So they can see that you have everything worked out. You're doing this for your business. You need this much for a loan. You can pay this back. They need to see that type of stuff. So I recommend step number six, do not skip. Step number seven. Step number seven would be getting your logo. After you got your LLC, your name is registered, you got your EIN number, you open up a business account, you got your business plan. Now it's time to get a logo for your business name. My name, again, is Shumaniac. I found this girl on Facebook. She was super, super, super nice. Um, I messaged her. I was like, hi, um, I see you're doing logos. Could you kind of, you know, work something out for me? You know, freestyle me a logo or anything. So I kind of told her, like, my idea of what I wanted. And I sent it to her. And she sent me back. She got it right on the nail. She sent me three options. I picked my option, changed the color, and changed the word at the bottom. Go crazy. I loved it. That was my logo. I stuck to it. So, yeah, getting your logo together will be the next step to do find you someone that can do it you can do it yourself just something short and simple that describes your brand when not too much you know like a lot of times I see people with cartoon uh, of a selfie of themselves and they'll get it made into a cartoon character and they have it as their logo or they'll have a whole picture of just a regular picture of a group as their logo like to me I would think something kind of sketchy is up by saying that, but not all businesses. So I just chose to go something short and sweet. Step number eight. Step number eight, I recommend, but it's not mandatory. And this step is trademark your logo. So when I say trademark your logo, I do mean like, for instance, I had a smiley face on my shirt and I decided to open up a brand. I trademarked that logo. So that logo is now mine. No one else can use that logo. So if someone else decided to lose, use their logo, I message them, hey, that's mine, it's trademark, it belongs to me. And they still decide to move forward with their logo, I can take them to court and yeah, not a pretty sight. So I recommend you trademarking your logo, step number eight, step number nine. And that step is your brand vision. What do you want your brand to look like? What colors do you want to use? What Thank you cards, business cards to look like. What do you want the your when the people hear Shumaniac and see it? What do you want them to see? So that is step number nine. And step number nine for me again, I didn't want it to be me. I didn't want my brand to be just me. So when people say Shumaniac, people think Kiera. No, I want Shumaniac to be a variety of different people. So brand vision is. The colors you want, I did decide to go with a rose gold, peachy looking color thingy, sort of like this. And this is my thank you card. So my thank you cards are simple, cut to the chase. I even made my cards myself and I got them printed out and picked them up from office mats. So the front of my card is just my logo, my slogan. And on the back, it says Shoe Maniac. I have my email address, my Instagram, Facebook, and my website. And then again, my slogan, go crazy. So nothing too too much. You don't have to go all that. You can do it yourself. I came up designing myself. I did it. Y'all can do it because <laughs> I am not the best. So my thank you card, I just got Shoe Maniac, babe. Thank you. On the back, it says, enjoy your purchase with some stars. Then it says, please let us know if your experience was anything but excellent. We look forward to seeing you shine. And I just got my Instagram again, my email, and the website. Simple and straight to the point. So, number 10, finding your vendor and placing your order. Now, for this step, I would say research, 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 research. Don't just go buying this and this and that because it's cute. Research what you are buying. 
So for me, I had two vendors. I had a U.S. vendor, U.S.-based vendor, and an overseas vendor. At the end, I ended up going with the U.S. US vendor. Um, now, all vendors you look up are going to seem bad or seem like a good idea at the time, but it's trial and error. Don't order something for your first time ordering from a vendor. Don't order nothing sky high. Start off low um, with a cheap little product or something that you can test out. Don't order a whole big bulk or something your first time ordering from this vendor because it could come in <laughs> not looking like what you ordered. So again, it takes trial and error to find your vendor. And in my vendor, again, I had the US base and the overseas. So I did compare comparing them to I wrote down um, my US vendor, I will place my order and it would ship out the same day. I would get it back in two to three days. So I was like, yeah, the shipping prices was lower versus the overseas vendor. It took like 10 days to get prepare my order, another 10 days to ship it to me. The shipping rates was high. The product came in, it looked nothing like the picture. It looked like a knockoff on the picture I seen. And that was my cue, like that, no, I didn't no longer wanted to do with overseas vendors. So I stuck with my US based vendor. So, and with the US based vendor, um, it's not accessible to everybody. So that's, really how I kind of like got more to it not too many brands will have what I'm having because you have to have your EIN number or LLC or register like you have to register your business with your state or county to get into that website and you have to upload your documentation as well versus the overseas vendor I think I downloaded WhatsApp and I was talking to them on there they sent me pictures um Cons and pros. So yeah, I end up going with the US based vendor. Mm -hmm. Step number 11 is get your brand influencers or brand ambassadors. So I got influencers, um, researched the difference between the two. I decided I want to do influencers. I got five or six girls and yeah, they represent my brand. They promote for me. And one thing that I did do with my influencers, I give them incentives to make them want to promote and gain more free shoes so that's another thing if you want any influencer or brand ambassadors it would be to give incentives so after you got your influencers um it's time to do photo shoots get your branding out there so i used the five or six girls who did photo shoots i did a photo shoot first of myself uh, as a business owner and then i did them as the brand the faces of shimani well, would so. be picking your website platform and getting your website built and and ready to go so for my website, um, I got I bought my domain and I handed everything else over to my mom. Uh, I researched, researched, researched which platform I want to use. There's Shopify, there's Wix, there's all types of platforms to use. So research it. YouTube will be your best option to compare and contrast the different platforms. I ended up going with Shopify and I'm glad I chose that. So find a platform that suits you um, and what you're looking for. Research, research, research. So once you got your website, you asked me what I wanted my website, what order did I want things to go in, catalog, about information, shipping policies. I told her everything. So I had all of this stuff down in my business plan. I wrote it down how I wanted to go and she just put it together because I can't do the coding and stuff. <laughs> That's not me. So she put everything I wanted together on the website. She even put it password sensitive. So after she got done with the website, no one could get onto it. You had to have the password to get in. So that password I gave to my influencers. So that was the first to see my website after it was done. They gave me feedback and I'm so thankful for my influencers because what looks good to me may not look good to no one else. So it's always good to get a second opinion. But yeah, so step number 12 is your website platform and getting your website designed and built. Okay, and the last step, which bring me after you got your business plan, you got your logo, you got your LLC, the EIN, your business bank account, you got your brand vision together, you got your vendors, you got your inventory in, you got your influencers, you got your photo shoot done, you got your website made. So what is the last step? The last step will be launching your brand. So back on my business plan and March when I decided, May, March, 
I wrote down I was gonna have my business luncheon October 2nd so October 2nd came it was on a Friday I threw my brand a lunch party so all my influencers was there I had close family and friends I had my influencers to, to model my inventory my shoes heels and everybody who came to the lunch party got to see what I was selling before I launched it so I launched my brand at 12 a.m. really October 3rd so everyone that came to the lunch party knew what I was lunching before I launched it. So that's why that was a great idea. If you decide to do a lunch party, whether it's a dinner or a small get together with your friends, it's good to lunch it before you, it's good to like a preview of what you're lunching before you're lunching it. So I chose to do it the same day. I hope you guys enjoy those 13 steps. It helped my brand so far. Um, I'm almost three months in. Um, I'm a two full months for sure. January the second will be three months. Today is December 24th, Christmas Eve. You guys won't see this video until after the New Year's. But um, again, I am two months in in my brand, almost three, and so far I have 78 orders I have fulfilled. Um, I'm hoping I have more before the end of the year, but so far so good. I'm glad I made this decision to start my small business during the pandemic. It I can do it during a pandemic. You can start your small business. Don't matter the circumstance. Um, just plan ahead and you got this. This is yours. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Those are the 13 steps. This is how I started my small business during a pandemic. Um, if you need me to go further in detail into whatever step or steps that you guys need more help in, I am also down to help. I can make another video to go in depth and more depth about that. So just let me know in the comments right now which step um, you need help with or what you thought of the video. If this video helped you out, you don't even have to be starting the video. If it gave you more information and insight on small businesses, just comment below what helped you out the most, what you love about this video. I love all types of feedback, good, negative, um, that will really help me grow as an individual on my YouTube channel. I do thank you guys so much again. Um, this is only beginning. So don't forget to like this video by giving it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe and we'll be back with more.